Hey everybody, it's Galmadex, and welcome back to another quick draft of Theros Beyond Death. In our pack, we've opened another Mythic Rare God, however, this one is actually not that great and limited, unfortunately. 5 mana for a 7-6 indestructible is pretty incredible, but you have to have devotion of 5 or more in red uh, to activate that. Otherwise, it's just an enchantment that sits there, gives your field haste, and the ability to cheat out creatures for 3 mana, but then sacrifice them at the end step. The enchantment half of this card is just not that great in limited. 5 mana to give everything haste is kind of redundant, because at that point you've probably already cast most of your creatures, so it's not really giving you much value there. Plus, again, at 5 mana, the ability to cheat things into play is definitely much less exciting than earlier in the game, especially because if you have this on the board anyway, you're giving everything haste, you've already played a 5 mana card, you're probably hitting a 6 land pretty quickly after that, you're very unlikely to have cards that cost more than 6 in limited. So, Perforos doesn't actually perform very well in limited unless you have a very heavy red devotion. If you do, this card is going to be good anytime you can activate the devotion. It's insane, but uh, the fact that this card does very, very little when you can't makes it not a particularly high pick, actually, especially for a Mythic Rare card. However, we've got some really good uncommons here to choose from. We have Elspeth's Nightmare, which is probably what I'm going to take here. Uh, this card is a little bit narrow. It destroys a creature and opponent controls with power 2 or less. That does not hit a lot of stuff, but any time that it hits anything... Uh, you're getting like a 2 or 3 for 1 from your opponent. You kill one of their early creatures, like an Evangel or an Envoy, and then you get to duress them. You look at their hand, get rid of one of their removal spells, and then you exile their graveyard to keep them off of escaping any cards. Even if they don't have any escape cards in their grave, the third part of the saga is still giving you value at shutting off their other escape cards, because then... They just have less things to use towards those costs. So Elspeth's Nightmare is just a really good card generally. If you can get value out of two of the three effects, it's fantastic. And if you get value out of all three, uh, then you're just having an absolutely swell time. So while the first part of this doesn't destroy everything you want it to, uh, just killing anything with it is good. So I do like Elspeth's Nightmare a lot. Dawn of Angels nice if you can get the aura-based kind of deck with a lot of two or less costs to bring them back as your stuff dies. And Wolf Willow Haven is fun in the ramp kind of deck, especially if you have stuff that cares about devotion, constellation, stuff like this, because then this is an enchantment, so it gives you a constellation trigger and another green symbol towards green devotion and if nothing else you can always turn it into a wolf leader when you no longer need the mana what do we have here do not think i'm taking another black card to follow up elspeth's nightmare this pack is loaded though lots of really good choices we have the best common removal spell out of white dreadful apathy and the best common removal spell in green warbriar blessing so those are fantastic. Our uncommons are pretty good here. Reverent Hoplite's pretty great if you end up in a heavy white devotion deck. Nyx Herald is pretty awesome in any form of aggressive deck. 3 mana for a 3-4 trample by itself, because it can target itself uh, with its ability. I guess it's only a 3-4 trample on attacks, but uh, still really solid. I do like that card a lot. And then Siona, Captain of the Pylia, is really good in the green-white aura decks. However, we're very unlikely to play Siona and Elspeth's Nightmare in the same deck. I generally am not a huge fan of, uh, of doing 3-color stacks. Three color builds of nonsense. I think I'm going to go with Nyx Herald here. This is just a card that has always performed very well for me. Uh, I enjoy it a lot. Taking it over Warbriar Blessing might be a bit much. Um, but it is an uncommon. We're probably seeing them less often than the Warbriars. Although I don't know how highly the bots pick this. It is pretty much the best green removal spell. I don't know. We could also take Dreadful Apathy and just go with Mono Removal the deck. Yeah, I'm sort of talking myself out of the Nyx Herald now that I've seen. <laughs> if I take a green card, I'm kind of compelled to take Warbriar Blessing here. 
Yeah, you know what? Let's jump ship then. We're gonna trade Dreadful Apathy. Screw the green cards. And that has worked pretty well, because now we can take Meyer's Grasp, just another good black removal spell. And now, if we manage to get any Heliod's Pilgrim, that card will be busted in this deck. Heliod's Pilgrim, there was one in the last pack, but that's a 3-mana 1-2 in white that searches your deck for an aura when you play it. So really good with aura-based removal like Meyer's Grasp and Dreadful Apathy. Also in white-black, there is an uncommon that is very, very good in a deck with enchantment-based removal like this. That is um, five mana to return a creature and enchantment from your grave to the battlefield. So bringing any creature plus a Meyer's Grasp back with that is pretty incredible. I do like Flicker of Fate here. We've got multiple sort of combos with it. With Flicker of Fate and Dreadful Apathy, if you have five mana up and you have something on your opponent's board that is dread Dreadful Apathy, you can activate its ability to exile whatever you've enchanted and then respond to that ability with Flicker of Fate before your Dreadful Apathy um, dies. So then you get to Dreadful Apathy something else and exile what it was initially attached to. So that's a great combo with it. Elspeth's Nightmare, also a solid combo with it. We can play Elspeth's Nightmare, destroy one of their creatures with power two or less. Next turn, make them discard a card. And then during their end step, just a flicker of fate, Elspeth's Nightmare, destroy another creature if we're lucky. Um, and then obviously make them discard another card if we're insanely lucky. Flicker of Fate just does some good things with what we have so far, and the other cards in white and black aren't incredibly exciting. I do like Soul Reaper in white black. White does have a lot of random 1-1 tokens and stuff, like we saw from the um, the Reverend Hoplite, so being able to sacrifice those is pretty good. Uh, but Nyx Burn Marauder... Ramader. Nyx Burn Marauder just has no text, it's just a 4-3, and Karamedra's Blessing is a good combat spell pump trick but flicker fate is also pretty tricky and uh it just does more cool combo-y stuff for our deck so we have omen of the sun i think if we had some of those random um sacrifice outlets right now like soul reaper of mogis we'd probably take omen of the sun more highly but here daybright camera is just a very very good card five mana for a three three flyer and it costs X less to cast, where X is your devotion to white. 5 mana for a 3-3 three, three flyer isn't the end of the world, but it's not that good. Uh, this card's really good when you can just play turn 2 um, Heliod's whatever. I don't remember what it's called. It's like the mini god, the demigod. 2 white mana for some kind of 2-2 two, two or something. If you play any cards with really high white devotion to where you can cast this for only 3 or 4 mana, then this card really shines. I do like it better than Hero of the Winds. So it's just not a fantastic stat line for 4 mana. 4 mana for a 1-4 flyer, and then... Yeah, you need like a bunch of pump spills and stuff, not really what I'm looking to do. Nyxborn Courser, there's one of the cards that works well with Daybreak Chimera. It's good at triggering your... Triggering? <laughs> triggering your white devotion. Uh, does give you a lot of value towards that. Makes the Chimera cost 2 less, and it's just a good 2-4 blocker to sit there and wall your opponent off. Another Nyxborn Courser for caring about devotion here. Pious Wayfarer is good in an aggressive deck because this can give plus one plus one to any creature you choose whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield. If the board is all clogged up then we can just use this later in the game when we're casting like Nyxborn Courser to give Chimera additional power. This is a really, really aggressive card, and we have a decent stack of removal right now. Dreadful Apathy, Myers Grasp, and Elspeth's Nightmare. And we have Nyxborn Courser, which is good in a defensive deck, Flicker of Fate. I think we're leaning more towards the defensive cards like Nyxborn Courser than the offensive ones like Wayfarer. Huh. Do have a lot of cards in white and black here, but I don't think any of them are particularly good. Sentinel's Eyes, I guess, works if we're going for a heavy aura theme. Right now, we don't have anything that actually cares about auras, but we could end up looking for um, Heliod's Pilgrims because we do have aura-based removal. Uh, we could end up with any hopeful Eidolons, one black for a 1-2 that you draw a card whenever something enchanted with one of your auras dies. That card's really good with uh, cards like Myers Grasp, and pretty solid with stuff like Sentinel Eyes. 
yeah, I think it's possible we'll get enough combos with that. That'll be fine. I'm not a huge fan of Libation because it is one of the removal spells that depends on what your opponent is playing. If you play against a deck that is really aggressive to where they're playing a bunch of small creatures in the early game and then big creatures in the late game, this isn't going to be that great because then they're just going to sacrifice a 2-2 when they have a 2-2 and a 6-6 on the board. Um, and alternatively, uh, it's really bad against token decks. So pretty bad against like red-black sacrifice, bad against a lot of white decks because they have the white omen that spits out multiple tokens. Um, but against like green black and stuff, it's, it's pretty solid. So really dependent on the matchup. So not really the kind of card I love to run. Definitely don't like rumbling sentry five mana for a three, six that scries one is just not that good. I'll take the transcendent envoy over it, but that's not that much more exciting. It does go well with the aura theme, allowing us to cast Myers grasp for one mana and dreadful apathy for two, which is cool. We wield a Reverent Hoplite, which is good, because we are ending up in a deck that is going to focus pretty heavily on our White Devotion. We already have two Nyxborn Coursers giving us two Devotion to White, Daybright Chimera caring about our Devotion and giving us two Devotion to White. So uh, yeah, we're definitely going to take cards like the Chimeras and Coursers highly now that we're taking a good payoff card for a White Devotion deck. We wield Hero of the Winds as well, so White is definitely open here. Um, do I want that over the... Leonin, probably. 3-1 is a solid stat line for 2 mana in an aggressive deck, and it does shut off an escape card if it trades with it. You just exile an escape card from their grave. That being said, we're doing decent on 2 drops right now, and I did say that I am trying to do something more defensive where a big old 1-4 would be better. This combos well with Reverent Hoplite as well. The more creatures we have on board, the more value we could potentially get out of the plus and plus O ability. Um, I think I'm going to take the hero here. Looking for more, I don't know, two twos over three ones that are two mana slot in this deck. Probably not playing Thaumaturge is familiar, but I suppose we could. Oh no. Oh no, they've given us so many choices here. So Labyrinth of Skophos is actually pretty great. Your land all of a sudden can just shut off their best creature every turn in the late game. Obviously it costs a lot of mana to do that, so you're not doing that until you've already cast everything else, but this really can can grind things down to a halt in the late game. However, there's some really nice stuff for our deck here. Archon of Falling Stars is just so good. Six mana for a 4-4 four, four flyer, that's just a big old kind of game-ending stat line. And when it dies, return an enchantment from your grave to the battlefield. That can bring back a creature like Corsair, it can bring back a Saga like Nightmare. The Sagas put themselves in the graveyard. Dreadful Apathy puts itself in the graveyard once you exile something with it. Myers Grasp as well. We have a lot of good targets for Archon, so I think I'm going to take Archon here. There's also Grey Merchant, but our Black Devotion is very low right now. While this is a really good Black Devotion payoff, right now we have Elspeth's Nightmare and Myers Grasp, and that is it for Black Devotion. So uh, we would really need to start drafting a lot of uh, Black Mana Symbols. Uh, after we take a Grey Merchant, whereas Archon is just immediately comboing with a lot of what we have going on. And uh, Daybreak Chimera is a card we'd definitely like to wheel. I think after the Archon, we'd like Chimera and then Labyrinth here. And if neither of those wheel, then we might look at one of these black cards, or a second Flicker, perhaps. We will see. Ooh, rough pack to open up here. Only one card has been taken out of the pack because this is pick two and there is nothing great in white or black. I guess Karametra's Blessing is the best we got here. One mana, plus two, plus two. If you target an enchantment creature or enchanted creature, it also gets hexproof indestructible, which is massive. So our deck does combo pretty well with this right now. We have a Sentinel's Eye, so we have one aura to put on two our important creatures. If we have Karametra's Blessing in hand, that's going to make us want to throw Sentinel's Eyes onto a Daybreak Chimera or Archon or something, so that we have the Hexproof Indestructible trick. And uh, even if we don't have the Sentinel's Eyes, we have Transcendent Envoy, Dixborn Coursers. We have a few cards that this will work on. And the baseline, the worst case scenario for that card is plus two, plus two. Well, now we're really just getting cut by the bots here. Literally one card in our colors. The general power level of our deck is high enough, though, that I'm not going to really swap out of any of our colors here. I suppose we could have tried to swap out of black there, just take something in case uh, black gets mega cut, but we'll see. I do like Indomitable Will a lot. We have some stuff that cares about auras, so it's good with that, and this is a combat trick that stays permanently, 
So if you combat trick onto your transcendent envoy to kill their 2-2 flyer in blue, all of a sudden your envoy's permanently a 2-4 flyer and you've killed their 2-2, so Indomitable Will can do some really cool things. Lagona Band Storyteller is pretty solid as well. 4 mana for a 3-4 and you can return an enchantment from your grave to the top of your library, gain life equal to its mana cost. Definitely good with the enchantment based removal like Myers Grasp and Dreadful Apathy, Elspeth's Nightmare as well that we have, but uh, I think Indomitable Will. It's just uh, a lot of fun, and I am trying to do an aura theme, really hoping to find some hopeful Eidolons in these packs. Alright, definite Dreadful Apathy here, just a fantastic removal spell. We're taking it over a little draw spell, or just another Karametra's Blessing, basically. Alright, I'll definitely take Dreadful Apathy over Heliod's Punishment. Mogis' Favor does work well with hopeful Eidolons but we don't have any in our deck yet. We're just hoping to open them up. And right now there's only two more packs we haven't seen in pack two, just pick seven and pick eight. So we only have two more chances in this pack and then we're just hoping to get hopeful Eidolons in pack three. So I don't think that dream is happening. Dreadful Apathy is generally a lot better than Favor if you don't have that kind of combo. So we'll go with Apathy. It's also better than Heliod's Punishment. It does cost one more mana than Heliod's Punishment, but... It, uh, it permanently makes it unable to attack and block and can exile it, uh, so they can't escape it or anything later. Heliod's Pilgrim, pretty great in this deck, although another flicker would be quite fun. We did have one in our opening pack, maybe we'll wield that if nothing else, but Heliod's Pilgrim is fantastic in here. Pilgrim is a nice little 1-2 for 3, which isn't the greatest, but the fact that this always draws a very good card is awesome. This always draws an Apathy or a Myers Grasp if we need removal, and if we don't need a removal, we can just pick up a Sentinel's Eyes, get a little bell value that way. Alright, pick eight here. Revoke Existence or a Leonin of the Lost Pride. We don't have any two mana, we have one two mana creature, just Transcendent Envoy, but we're really low on them, so I think I will take Leonin over Revoke Existence. Also, we just have tons of creature removal, so I don't think we need stuff like Revoke Existence because it's, I don't know, it's just less, um, less versatile. Alright, Hero of the Winds, Soul Reaper of Mogis, and Flicker of Fate. Let's see what just our creature curve looks like here. See if we need to prioritize any certain mana costs. Curve doesn't look that bad. Obviously not a ton at the early mana costs, but I already said I'm trying to draft more of a slower defensive deck. I kind of want to take Hero of the Winds, just really lean in on white as the core of this deck, keep our white devotion really high. Soul Reaper would be good with token producers, but the only token producer we really have right now is Reverend Hoplite. And Hero of the Winds is also good with token producers, with uh, cards like Sentinel's Eyes, Karametra's Blessing. Yeah, I think I'll take the Hero. Flickers are cool, but they tend to go really late in the draft, so if we need some more of them, we'll probably be able to pick up a couple more. And we do have one worst-case scenario to play around with. Now I will definitely take a Hero of the Pride. We do want some more early creatures, definitely more than the Glory Bearers, because we've got a lot at... Uh, four or five mana up here. Oops, almost took Glory Bears. Grim Physician, I don't know if I'm playing that, but we'll put it in for now. Black Red Elder Giant in pack three. Well, a little awkward, but it's not really gonna happen. Dawn of Angel could be good with this deck. Um, we have tons of aura-based removal. We only have Myers Grasp that will make the creature die, Dreadful Apathies exile them, so we actually only have one card that combos with this killing our opponent's creatures, and then one card that combos with it on our creatures, the Sentinel's Eyes. It's not as good as it looks, but it is solid. I might even just want another Daybreak Chimera, because we're looking more devotion-y than... than... aura dying combos. Yeah, I'm going to take Daybreak Chimera over that, because again, Myers Grasp and Sentinel's Eyes are our only two combos with this, and we don't even have a ton of, like, good two or less creatures. Nothing great here. Can take a 3-1 for 2. 
two, two for two that can't be blocked sometimes. Five mana, four for... I don't think I'm looking for five, six mana cards. I think I just take one of the two drops. Take the white one again for keeping that white devotion high. Omen of the Sun could be solid here. We are kind of going wide with these Hero of the Wind type effects. And Reverend Hoplite and stuff. Lampad and Venomous Aerophant are both good black cards. But I'm starting to get to a point where maybe I could just do Mono White here. That would be a really fun way to end the Theros out. I had a great time with Mono Green. Maybe just go Mono White here. I do love me some Mono Color decks. And yeah, it looks like it's going to pan out for us. Definitely going to be possible. Still getting packs with multiple great choices here. I'll see it. Birth of Melodus, Sentinel's Eyes, and Triumphant Search. All of these are fine picks. I think I'll go with the All Seed. I just really like its ability. It also just gives you a 1 1 lifelinker until your opponent plays a blocker. You can gain a few life off that. Flicker of Fate or Nyxborn Courser. This is. It's kind of weird that these are both actually just very high picks for this deck right now, because I am liking our White Devotion stuff going on. Nyxborn's. Nyxborn Courser turn 3 immediately makes Chimera uh, only cost 3 mana, so we can just cast Chimera next turn. And it's obviously also good with Hoplite, but I guess Hoplite is the only um, card that really cares about White Devotion. I think I'm going to take Flicker of Fate over the Courser. We kind of do have a good amount of creatures now. And uh, Flicker of Fate also combos really well with Hoplite, so we have a lot of fun combos with Flicker. Should be Mono White Flicker of Fate. And see how well it goes. Sentinel's Eyes or Rumbling Sentry. This does give us two white devotion, but once we're at five mana already. So it doesn't help cast Chimeras any cheaper. It only helps with Hoplite. And by the time we have five mana, we're probably just casting Hoplite if we have it. Just grab a Sentinel's Eyes. Get more things to combo with Hero of the Winds. And, uh, I don't know, Pious Wayfarer kind of effects. Wow, we just have a ton of Heliod's Pilgrims. But they are pretty great in this deck. Another Nyxborn Courser is fine with me. We need to cut a lot of cards even, even playing Mono White here. I guess we're probably not playing Black now. If they did decide it would be more fun to try to do the Mono White thing. Probably not playing these swords, but... It's possible, since they are colorless. Oh, wow, Triple Sentinel's Eyes. I don't know if I'm playing all three. Last pick, Nyxborn Courser. Let's go. Can really sure up that slot. All right, get out of here, familiar. You don't add any devotion to white. Um, we do have Indomitable Will as well as three Sentinel's Eyes. I think I cut two, go one Sentinel, one Indomitable Will. Omen of the Sun is kind of more creatures. So we kind of just have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight non-creatures. That still seems like kind of a lot, especially when we're going for devotion here. Really want to? I don't really want to cut Karametra's Blessing because we have a lot of auras and we have a lot of enchantment creatures, so this is going to be good a lot of the time. I really don't want to cut a Flicker, don't want to cut a Will, don't want to cut an Apathy, don't want to cut an Omen. Maybe we're just playing a lot of non-creatures here. I have to cut five more cards. Oh boy, this is going to be a difficult one. I feel like I'm always saying that when we're cutting cards, though. I love all of these cards. So... Pious Wayfarer is only going to be good if we keep all of our like 1s and 2s, but we kind of do want to keep all our 1s and 2s. We have 6 3-mana cards right now. I actually want to cut 1 Pilgrim 2 Courser. And we're actually going more low-to-the-ground aggressive with this thing. Which means I could cut a land or two. The Chimeras we can cast cheaper with our Devotion, so we could put them at the, like, three-mana slot. Just go 15 lands. <laughs> Maybe I'll get hosed for that, but I really don't want to cut any of our non-land stuff because it's all, like, super fun. 
we actually ended up a lot more aggressive than I thought we would be. We were going for more control -y, but a lot of that was with our black cards, Elspeth's Nightmare and Myers Grasp. I love how those were the only two black cards, really, we ended up with the whole time. Grim Physician doesn't count. This is not a card. I, I mean, I don't know. I guess it is. It can kill a 2-2. It's fine. I could really go in on aggro and throw in two more Sentinel's Eyes and just, like, cut an Archon and, and Hear of the Winds or something, but... That seems too all-in, even for my tastes. So we're going mono-white aggro here. Triple Dreadful Apathy. Double Heliod's Pilgrim to search some of those up. Definitely... Definitely a decent amount of removal here. Pretty good aggressive curve. Excited to try this out. Did not see a single hopeful Eidolon. That is sad. I'm not going to be able to play that deck a single time in the return to Theros. This is the last day that Theros Beyond Death drafts are on Arena, unfortunately. So this will be the last Theros Beyond Death quick draft. I don't want to mulligan this because I just don't have any creatures till turn three. This is a really slow hand. I will keep it though. Generally, mulliganing is just really, really bad. Like, you really don't want to mulligan unless you absolutely have to. That's what I've heard from a lot of, uh, Pro kinds of players. Don't really need to pilgrim for any enchantment. I have my two enchantments, Apathy and Sentinel's Eyes. The only thing I could pilgrim for would be the plus one plus two at instant speed, which obviously if I pilgrim for that, they'll know that it's coming and it's a lot less good. Our opponent is on three color, so polar opposites of the spectrum here. Three color versus mono color. Maybe we'll see a green omen and they'll grab a fourth color. Not yet, at least. We did draw the Indomitable Will as well, so we have one copy of every aura in this deck. So, Hero of the Winds is not really doing much. Or, I'm sorry, Heliod's Pilgrim is not really doing much. It does block the, uh, the Wayfair unless they get a Constellation trigger. Just get all our Apathies out of the deck, I guess. We've got a Flicker as well for another removal. Tropia, the twice favored, real solid card whenever they constellation getting a permanent plus one plus one counter on something else. I'm thinking that we need to apathy that, but it still has its ability when we apathy it, unfortunately. We don't have anything better we could do against it. Could try to get him with an Indomitable Will, just attack both here. But the problem with that is I can't cast Indomitable Will and Apathy, so if I attack and they block with Wayfarer, we just let that happen. If they block with Eutropia, we absolutely use it. Double block? That's three power? I think we still just get them, because we have four toughness. Oh yeah, that was great. That was great, great, great stuff for us. Uh, just hold on to a flicker of fate. Not likely to use it, but don't really see a point in Sentinel's Eyesing right now. We've got a Hero of the Winds coming up. That'll be really good to throw Sentinel's Eyes onto to buff the whole field and have a 2-5 Flying Vigilance. Definitely better than buffing one of these right now, I think. Elspeth conquers death. We can respond with the Flicker of Fate, get some more value off of the Heliod's Pilgrim. I could also Flicker the Indomitable Will and just make Courser a 3 6. I don't really think we want to Flicker here. We're just saving a 2 4, which is just not much.
yet. We'll allow it. I guess I won't really have time to cast this Flicker of Fate later, which is a thing. I could Flicker my Corsair and just kill Wayfarer here. I guess we'll do that since, yeah, I kind of argued myself into doing this because I won't really have time for the Flicker later. The thing is, flickering the Heliod's Pilgrim doesn't give us that much value. It makes sure that we still have a 1-2 on the board, but I have another Heliod's Pilgrim in hand, so we could already search for our last aura in the deck, and we literally, we just drew it anyway. Some real awkward draws here. Just naturally drawing, like, four or five of our five or six auras. So the heal odds are definitely worse. I don't get to grab anything off of this one. Daybreak Chimera only costs two. We can cast it. They can't attack in with the um, Sunmade Pegasus because of that. Elspeth Conquers Death is making our stuff cost two more. So Sentinel's Eyes cost three. If we cast that, that's the only thing we cast this turn. But we do get to attack in if we do that. They know we have an Apathy for next turn. I think we play Chimera and just Apathy Pegasus next turn. Because next turn we have enough mana to cast Apathy and Sentinel's Eyes, and then we're buffing even more creatures off of Hero of the Winds' plus one plus O ability. So we're netting more damage over the course of the two turns. Unless they have a pretty good enchantment here. For the Eutropia Constellation trigger. Another Sun Main Pegasus. Two mana up. Could be an Indomitable Will. That would be pretty bad for me. Yeah, it's holding. So we need to play around Indomitable Will, I think. That'd be plus one, plus two. Turn Pegasus into a three, five. But Utropia also gives it a counter. Turn it into a four, six. If it's a 4-6, we can't attack into that. I think I have two more Dreadful Apathies. I just kind of chill then. Just hanging out. Just vibing. If it's a Flicker of Fate, that's also pretty bad for me. They kind of counter one of our dreadful apathies if it's a flicker of fate. That's not the end of the world, and they just have a 2 3 Sun Main Pegasus again. Alright, let's go big. I uh, just choose a flyer. We're just going to attack with all of our flyers here. I'm sure. I guess we could attack with Corsair. They could double block and kill it. Yeah, if they double block, I kill Eutropia, so... Seems fine to me. A Flicker just gives them another 2-3 to block, which doesn't muddy things up that much. Okay, no... Uh, no Indomitable Will. That's the other thing. Dragging out the Indomitable Will just to kill my ground creature would have been good for us as well, because then they couldn't use it at instant speed to give something flying with Eutropia's Constellation effect. So. The audio seems a little loud to me here. Um, I completely lost my train of thought. And say, yeah, I think I think just the basically attack all was definitely right at the end there. All right, we're going first with the turn one Wayfarer into just a bunch of enchantments. Also, we'll have two devotion to white on turn three, which means that we get to cast Chimera on turn three. So really good curve here, and we're on the play. Opponent starts off with a forest. We draw into a hero of the pride. 
Might have been better to play that first. Um, but this does make Apathy cheaper, so we could cast Hero and Apathy turn four, which could be a real fancy curve. Yeah, we hit our fourth land, so next turn just double spell. Could be a thing. See if they want to trade with Wayfarer. They do not, so they'll just take the damage. We're definitely fine to take anything on the crackback. I think we're definitely on the aggressive here since we did get to play first with a nice curve. War Briar Blessing. Because of Skirmisher's ability, they get to kill Chimera with that, unfortunately. Turns into a 3 4. Really sick combo there. Just exactly big enough. That was tremendously rude. I guess we'll just get there with flyers here then. Could apathy that thing, but it's generally so small I'd rather wait, especially when I'm against green red. Those decks tend to have a lot of big creatures, definitely bigger than a 2-3. Can't block if I attack with two creatures, right? So we don't need to deal with that yet. Yep, don't need to deal with that yet. Let's just uh, get some more creatures on this board for now. Buff the flyers a tiny bit. And we have all Seed of Life's Bounty to counter one removal spell, which is nice. Or it could even push through lethal. You can give your creatures protection from like red and then they can't block with their red creature. Warden of the Chained. Alright, 4-4 four, four blocker on the ground. Can attack as well, but as I said before, I'm pretty on the aggressive here. I guess if they play enough just four power creatures, I should start getting a little worried about that. Definitely not worried yet. Moment of the Forge, two damage to something. Can sacrifice Allseed to counter it. And they just choose the Allseed? Why would you choose the Allseed is my question. Oh, I guess that way their next removal spell definitely gets to push on those. If they choose anything else, I could just choose not to sacrifice this. But yeah, I was going to sacrifice it whatever they targeted. <laughs> because I just don't think that far. Flicker of Fate. We do have the Flicker Dreadful Apathy combo. I need one more land to do that, but that could definitely be a big thing. If I play Dreadful Apathy, Wayfarer gives plus one plus one until end of turn to Hero of the Pride. I get to attack all three and they can't block with Skirmisher. Seems like my best play here. Push in for damage, just try and kill them quick. Worst case scenario. We can flicker to just move Apathy to their better creature. Best case scenario, we just hit one more land and we get to do the flicker fate combo. Well, worst case scenario it is. We'll just kind of screw with them here, counter their Iroas' blessing. Stola Grove Dancer. They hit us for 7. Nope, because that just came out, so they just hit us for 4. We go to 12. We hit for 2 a turn. They're at 7. Definitely win this race, especially with Karametra's Blessing. That's plus 1, 2, 3, 4. Not quite lethal. Depending on how they block here, this could just be lethal. Alright, so we are just trading with all of their stuff, except the Flummox Cyclops this way. I can pump Hero of the Winds. Yeah, if I pump Hero of the Winds, they need two removal spells to, uh, to survive. Because either of these hits them for one. I guess if they hit one removal spell, Flummox Cyclops does get the block. So maybe I should have uh, pumped the 2-2. Just to make it more likely I have two creatures left. 
That's true, because of this ability where it can't block if two of my creatures attack, I actually should have just saved Hero of the Pride to help make it so the Cyclops could just never block. Because then even if they drew a removal spell for one of my flyers, I could just keep attacking with one flyer, one ground dude, and they wouldn't have any blockers. So that was a bit of a misplay at the end there, but Mono White's doing great so far anyway. Luckily for us. Alright. Another pretty solid curve. Envoy even making Indomitable Will only cost one mana. Really cool. Here of the Winds turn four here, we could double spell onto it. Indomitable Will and Sentinel's Eyes. Just really buff the whole field if we go wide. Lean into the Lost Pride. Um, I do have Omen of the Sun coming up, so I don't really want to trade with that. I'll just pass. Do need to hit one more land to get my Omen of the Sun, though. Another Leon in the Lost Pride. I um, think we play land attack with Envoy and just... These lean-ins can never attack because then we just kill both with 1-1 one, one tokens. Delete them. Do they have plus one toughness to their whole field? They have plus one toughness to one of them. Alright, that's still pretty great value out of the Omen of the Sun, even just killing one of them. Hero of the Winds, so we can start buffing the whole field. Definitely racing here, if we take four a turn that's not that bad and they're stuck on two mana. We can definitely outrace Heliod's Punishment. Alright, we can still outrace, we still do have the ability of this if I throw stuff onto it, but I don't really want to throw stuff onto it. Just keep making our field wider. Could get them with an Indomitable Will if they don't have anything. If they attack in here. Three mana. Leaves them open to have more stuff, but I'm not losing a ton if they get me here. Nice. I am gaining a ton if I kill their thing, though. Kunaros, Hound of Athreos. Yeah, double Dreadful Apathy means that's a really easy choice. There would be, like, a bit of a choice otherwise. Uh, but now I've got a backup removal spell, so we're just really good to just shut that off there. Timuretch chosen from death can exile stuff from graves and gain life when he does it. So, Timuretch can definitely stave the bleeding a little bit. Can't attack with my 1 1 anymore. Drop another Hero of the Winds to throw the Sentinel's Eyes onto. The punishment is almost over. As well on the first Hero of the Winds. Lampet of Death's Vigil can also stem the bleeding a little bit by sacrificing Kunaros, gaining a little bit of life there. Also sacrifice whatever I target with this dreadful apathy. I think we just push in for potential lethal with Sentinel's Eyes on Hero of the Winds this turn. And then... If I have just any creature left after this, they just die to that. They have one blocker. Block the 4-6, attack everybody else, and that's lethal. But they could survive by sacrificing everything, but then they have no board left. They would need a wrath effect. And even if they wrath, we could follow it up with a chimera. So unless they had, like, an instant speed wrath effect, I think there was not much they could do there. So another real solid 
deck, or a real solid game for the mono white deck. Turns out mono colored has been pretty solid for me in this format. I also just enjoy mono colored a lot, so I'm happy to do it. These devotion decks are, are definitely very fun. 3 and 0 oh thus far. Even if we lose the next three rounds, we've got a nice average 3 3. Can't be too unhappy with that, but I do like to hit at least 4 3, especially in premier drafts, because that's where you get your value back. In quick drafts, unfortunately, you have to win like six games to get your gems back. So let's go for 6 3 here at least. Are we on the play? Oh my god, we're on the play and they mulliganed. Pretty lucky start for us, but we'll see how it pans out. They could always just have a good deck, make some good plays here. But we are at the advantage in a couple ways right now. Mm, don't have anything to make cheaper with Envoy, but Envoy does. Plus the Wayfarer here. I think I just play Hero. Could do a double pump. Play Envoy and Sentinel's Eyes on Hero of the Pride next turn. Just get a large attack in that turn. Incendiary Oracle. Karametra's Blessing as well here. Interesting. Could eat the Oracle at the price of a pump spell. I don't think I want to do that. I think I could just play Envoy and Sentinel's Eyes and keep the pump spell for later because now I can just attack in with both of these hit for 8 here or they have chump block ooh down to 11 let's go mono white aggro they don't kill he okay <laughs> I shouldn't speak I was gonna say if they don't kill hero of the pride Karametra's blessing should be an absolute beating next turn they did kill hero of the pride though Sentinel's eyes on Wayfair makes it a 2-3 permanently which is uh big enough to get through Oracle however we need another card in our grave to do that we need to exile two so I'd have to cast Karametra's blessing first just to throw Sentinel's eyes on Wayfair it might be worth it Although we have a Hero of the Winds coming up, so maybe not. No, I'm going to keep the momentum going and just get as aggressive as possible here. Hit for six. Down to five. Their fateful end kills the Wayfarer. We hit him for one a turn. They're on a five turn clock. I was going to say if I hit any lands, we've got more flyers coming up. Speed that up. Could sacrifice Alcia to be able to use the Sentinel's Eyes. I don't think I want to do that yet, though. I think I want to save this to try to save the Envoy from a removal spell. Probably playing another creature here if they're attacking in still. Or not. Weird. Flicker of Fate makes me feel like this attack's really safe. We have Flicker and I'll see it up. Maybe they have their own Flicker of Fate. Omen of the Sun. Sure. Mm. I think we allow the trade because then we just get to use Sentinel's Eyes too. But then they could use a removal spell on Envoy, and if they do use a removal spell on Envoy, uh, I can't save Sentinel's Eyes. Because, yeah, if they removal spell Envoy and I don't have an All Seed, I could flicker or fade it, but then I lose whatever, um, whatever auras I put on it, like the Sentinel's Eyes. <laughs> Maybe I do flicker the Alcyon here. 
Then I could cast Sentinel's Eyes next turn. And I know that the Envoy is safe for a turn. Because this gives me the second card to escape Sentinel's Eyes with. No blocks. Down to 12. They're at 5. They have Heliod's Pilgrim here. 2 mana up. If they get white based removal, that'll be bad for me, because then I have to kill my Sentinel's Eyes to stop the removal. So if they get Dreadful Apathy... Alright, I rose his Blessing. That is fine. I can counter that with all seed. Nyxborn Courser. They're dead in three turns to my flyer thanks to Sentinel's Eyes. If I cast Sentinel's Eyes. Or I play Nyxborn Courser to get defensive. If I attack with Envoy, it would be a 2-3 Flying Vigilance, so I do get to block one of the 1-1s as well. I'm at 12. I block, like, one thing. I take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, basically. Take 5 again. I have to draw into something to push in the final point of damage, but I think I can get there. If they have white-based removal, we do lose, though. Pretty much guaranteed. Hope that all they have is the Iroas' blessing. Because if they cast it pre combat and we give pro red, we even get to block any of their red creatures without even worrying about it because we can't take damage from red sources. So they have really bad attacks if they cast Iroas' blessing pre combat. I guess they all have uh, they all have three toughness though, so they wouldn't die. So it's not that bad. But I do get to stop as much damage as possible if I want to. Yeah, I'm absolutely gonna block that because that's gonna be uh, massive. Massive attacker that attacks for four because they can bump they can buff it once. I just have to hit them two more times. Block, take four, go to eight. I can survive another hit from everything. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, no, I can't. I need, I need them to not have more removal to win. But I've got a big chance. Two four on the ground or one four in the sky? One four in the sky, because then even if they kill Envoy next turn, if I can survive, then Hero of the Winds will finish them off. And this dies to less removal. This is an enchantment, so it dies to anything that kills enchantments as well. If I can survive through this turn with one creature on this board, then we get there. I'm definitely nervous about it. Opponent is in the think tank because they know they need to kill me this turn if they don't have removal. Play land, discard a card to Oriad. Searching for removal. Even, actually, even if they have removal, they need to kill me this turn. So if they have removal, and it only costs two mana, they could probably win. But if they have removal that costs four, I can block the oracle and still win. Oh my god, what? Oh, am I going to lose to a Crone War? They get to keep my Envoy so they can block Hero of the Winds? That's probably literally the only card in their whole deck that could have saved them. Oh my god. Well, I have three Dreadful Apathy in this deck, and all of those save me. But I have one turn to draw it, 
Although our opponent had one turn to draw a crow in war. Alright, come on. Wow, that is... <sighs> that is insanely bad beats. I genuinely can't believe that. Well, definitely a part of magic. It happens. Uh, if there was anywhere earlier in the game where we could have chipped away one more damage, obviously that would have gotten us there, but... Otherwise, certainly just a, a brutal ending. They can buff that thing, like, indefinitely. I guess I should have played Leonin instead, because that could trade with that. But I... Yeah, I'm on tilt here. It wouldn't matter, they can all attack and they hit for four. Yeah, no, it literally wouldn't matter. I block there, block there, take four, no matter what creature I play. Uh, that is... Uh, that is a real bad way to end it there. Definitely a great time for our opponent, though. Three and one it is. That was also a game because they they needed that Acroan War and they needed to draw it exactly when they did. That was a game where if we just got slightly less mana screwed, like if we were able to cast our 1-4 flyer one turn earlier, we would have absolutely smashed as well. Brutal game there. I'm gonna keep this. We've got a decent amount of mana. Obviously no early game plays, so this isn't a, a great curve or anything. Definitely leaning into our late game cards like Archon. Eidolon of Philosophy. Just started off. 1-2, they can sacrifice to draw 3 cards once they have 7 mana. Towering Wave Mystic, a little 2-1. Alright, well, this start is starting to get real scary. Because we still are not going to have a creature till turn 4. Could flicker the Towering Wave Mystic just to stop 2 damage here, but that doesn't seem worth it right now. I guess they get to mill us 2 as well, but not really worried about the mill. They hit one of our two-drop creatures, that's not good for us. I'm not gonna dreadful apathy one of these tiny creatures. I guess with Flicker of Fate, I could use it on something else again later. But Cure of the Winds just stops all of their attacks. Alright, they're stuck on th three lands. We got Cure of the Winds coming up here. I guess I could also Omen of the Sun now. Home of the Sun's probably a little better. Because we'd rather them counter or rem use removal on that than the 1-4. Uh, the so just take one here, but we gain two life and kill Towering Wave Mystic. Do still get milled two more cards, so we're down to 23 cards. We've gotten a lot of mill out of the Towering Wave Mystic, that's for sure. If they want to dump uh, a pump spell to kill a 1-1, one, one, I'm fine with that. Alright, looks like they do not, but they probably had the option based on them uh, holding that long there. Oh, Reverend Hoplite. I don't know if I'm ever going to get to cast this card. There were definitely a lot of games where I was looking at our devotion number being like 8 or 9, and I'm like, ooh, if we draw a Hoplite, that would be cool. Flicker is also good with Omen of the Sun. We have a lot of stuff to Flicker, which is real fun. If I add one more to my White Devotion, then Chimera only costs three. But I can't do that. So I cast Hero or I cast Chimera. I guess I'd rather Hero get countered at this point. We want the higher Power Flyer, so we'll cast Hero first to draw out a counter spell, and then we'll cast the, the Daybreak. No counters, but maybe at least we can draw a removal spell out. See if they have an Omen of the Sun of their own. Trade some 1-1s. One -ones. Yeah, this is just an exact trade. This is completely fine for us. Is 
it's turn to Smissel to bounce the hero. If I were a opponent, I probably just wouldn't have even traded there then. Just bounce the hero and just stay aggressive. If you're on the aggressive, you gain two life from the Omen of the Sun. And taking one damage just puts you at 21 instead. Since it's just an exact trade, I don't think it was super necessary to get my 1-1 token off the board. They haven't cast a counter spell yet. Which maybe means Archon's the play. But I can cast Hero of the Winds and Flicker of Fate. Yeah, I guess maybe they just don't have counters. I'm always scared though. Always scared whenever there's a playable counter spell in a limited format. Because they can get you bad. Deny the Divine is the counter spell in this format that sees a lot of play. Two and a blue to exile a creature or enchantment spell. Which is basically the vast majority of things in this format. Glory Bearers. Whenever their creatures attack, they get plus one plus one on the turn. Sure. I can flicker my Omer of the Sun, and then I have a couple 1-1s. One and then I can trade my 1-1 one -one into their 1-1. One -one. Which, because I'm at 12, that is a trade that I think makes sense to me on the defensive here. I also gain life off of doing that, so I think it's worth it for multiple reasons. Unless they have a one mana pump spell here. Alright, they did not. Sentinel's Eyes. I do like throwing that onto the Hero of the Winds and, and going wide, but... They've got one mana up. This is the time to Archon. We know they don't have counters. If it dies currently, it just brings back a Transcendent Envoy, which is not that great. But if it doesn't die, it's a big ol' 4-4 flyer to start jamming in our opponent's face. Sentinel's Eyes on the Hero of the Winds, buff the field and get a big attack in here. Then I can cast Daybreak Chimera and hold up a Flicker of Fate. I think I like that probably the best, because I like being able to Flicker Archon if they try to remove it. We're just trying to get there in the sky. So we're definitely playing Chimera, that's that's for sure. We're probably playing that host combat. Just give them as little information as possible. I do need to get better at at uh, waiting till main phase two on things. Played Daybright Chimera. And my apologies about the um, notification. Yeah, just hold up Flicker of Fate. And if we don't have to Flicker, we can sacrifice the Omen of the Sun to scry a bit, which might be worth it. There's a mild reason to keep it on the board. If we can keep it on the board, then we can also Flicker for two 1-1s one -ones at any point, but it doesn't seem super important. Let's see if they scry one to the top here. Nope, two to the bottom, so they are digging. Our flyers are having a good time this game. If they get a flyer... Ooh, if they get a liar, that's also bad for me. But I guess they only have three mana up here, so they get to tap Chimera. We still attack for six in the sky every turn, which is good. Could attack for nine in the sky if I flicker Chimera. If I flicker Chimera, we attack for 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We don't get lethal even if we draw into a pump spell, so I don't think it's worth the flicker. Let's just sack the Omen of the Sun. Ooh, all Seed of Life's Bounty. I like that. Scry the land to the bottom, though. Uh, no Constellation triggers right now. Nothing to target our creatures for Hero of the Winds. Just attack with the Flyers. And I think I'll just play the all Seed. The only creatures that matter on our board are our flyers, so I don't really want to overcommit. If they do get a wrath effect, there is a wrath effect in the sh in the format, Shatter the Sky. Yeah, there's just oh, okay. 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We kill him with flyers. All right. Kura bests the Sea God. It is a terrifying card. Get an 8-8 Hexproof, then gain... Wait, no, then tap our whole field to get in for lethal, then gain control of one of our things. Uh, unfortunately for them, though, Flicker on our flyer will be lethal in the sky. Flicker of Fate putting in a ton of work this game. Exactly lethal, too. Oh, boy. That was a nice one. Probably our opponent feeling pretty similarly to uh, to how we felt when our opponent top decked the Akron War there, where they were like, literally one turn. Which is true. Literally one more turn, they tap our whole field, they can't block anything. That's probably lethal on board. Yeah, with an 8-8, eight, eight, that's 100% definitely lethal on board. So if we did not have Flicker there, that would have been horrible for us. We're going first. Don't have anything actually castable here, because both of our cards that cost two or less do involve having a creature up. I only need one land to get to Courser. I'm going to keep it. Maybe we'll get host, maybe not. We'll see. The really nice thing about being in mono color, well, it's usually not the right play, because... You just don't get the depth of cards that you get when you get to pick the best cards out of at least two colors. You're just taking the best cards in one color. Um, but what you get in, in return for that, in return for just being in one color, is the fact that you're never going to get screwed off of one of your colors. You're always just going to have the perfect mana for casting whatever at whatever mana cost. Like, you might not have enough lands, but you will always have the right lands. And unfortunately, our opponent does look to be on an aggressive start, which is not what we want to see if we're going to be getting stuck on any lands. I guess they could apple th apathy wayfarer. Apathy? It's whatever. Words. Entrancing liar. They can spend two, keep the courser down. Would be annoying. I can play Hero of the Pride, hold up Karametra's Blessing. Kill Wayfair with a pump spell instead of a removal spell. I think that would be better. I think I would rather do that. Well, all right, this is a little weird, but sure. Moment of the sun. Give it plus one, plus one. It's still not lethal. Sure. Do they have another plus one, plus one here? Or what is this about? They're tapped out. 3-4 into 2-4, and they're tapped out. This has got to be just... I kill Wayfarer for no cost? Okay. Well, the cost is my Karametra's Blessing, but I'm cool dropping down a pump spell to kill it. Ooh, Daybreak Chimera is awesome here. This is where the uh, Devotion on Courser is looking great. They could double block and kill my Hero of the Pride. I do have Indomitable Will, so I could stop that, but I would rather they just not block. They did not block, so we get to drop our Chimera. Is pretty great. Our white devotion is getting really high for the hoplite if we get a couple more lands. Of course, they are black white, so they probably have a ton of removal to just get our cards like Chimera off the board. Laguna Band Storyteller can pick up Sentinel's Eyes to the top. Don't think they'll do that though. Yeah, they just choose not to. We hit for three a turn in the sky off of that thing. We still have Indomitable Will. 2 4 into a 3 4 is not that bad. Indomitable Will makes pretty much any of our attacks fine. But we could play Hero of the Winds instead. Nah, I'll just go for it. Just the double block, right? Will it is. They're down to 11. Next turn, Hoplite would be 7 Devotion to White, because it does not count its own Devotion when it's in your hand. But it will count it once it's getting its Enter the Battlefield effect. So we could get a ton of human soldiers. Could be real cool. I guess that would be the biggest argument for just casting Hero of the Winds, is if we get lucky and just hit our fifth land next turn, Indomitable Will on a hero or a hero of the winds, well, either hero, to buff all of the one ones is just massive. Like, that's just gotta be lethal. That being said, we're still getting pretty much just gotta be lethal this way. All right, Hoplite, let's go! Mono white! Woo! Seven one ones. They need a Wrath. 
they could play like five removal spells or five creatures and we'll still get there. Nightmare Shepherd, a real good creature, but not going to be able to block how wide Reverend Hoplite just made our board. Really, really great devotion payoff. All of the um, uncommon devotion payoffs are just fantastic if you do end up very heavily in that color. So obviously being mono color, we do really show off the power of those cards. Last draft being in mono green showing off Clothis' design, and this draft mono white showing off that hoplite. Five and one now. We might actually get another seven win run with the monocolor decks here. Should be very cool. Very nice way to end this. It's not going to be another 7 0 no matter what. Already got a loss, unfortunately. Could you imagine 7 0 with mono green into 7 0 with mono white? That would have been kind of beautiful. But I'll, I'll take what we can get. It is already better than I thought, but uh, we'll see if we can't get it even better than that. Opponent is going first. We don't have any plays till turn three, but probably not worth going down a card because once we hit turn three, we've just got tons of stuff. We even have the scry off of the Omen of the Sun if the game goes long and we still don't draw lands after our third. Chain Web Arachnir will start things for our opponents. A little one-two reach. It can escape later as a four-five reach which is threateningly large, and it kills something when it comes into play. It does four damage to one of our flyers. This card is just really good against us, because it kills like a Chimera when it comes in, and uh, can do potentially even more than that by just sticking around as a four or five reach so it blocks all our other flyers. So they're sending him for two here. We're down to 17. When it does have three mana, crossing our fingers for our third. All right, not yet. We will have to discard a card at the end of turn here. What do I discard with this hand? Karametra's Blessing, probably. Doesn't really seem like a game where we're going to have time to use a little combat trick. We're just going to want to be dumping creatures out every turn. Like, maybe we should discard one of the five mana cards, especially Hoplite, because it doesn't get a cost reduction, whereas Chimera does, but... Hoplite, as we saw last game, is so incredibly good in the late game in this deck. Maybe even a Flicker. Maybe we just don't have time to play around with that stuff. But Flicker can screw over our opponent in many ways, too. Even if we don't get access to anything. If they play, like, a, a good aura or something, we can Flicker their thing. Yeah, I'll discard Karametra's Blessing. Because if they play any form of aura or plus one, plus one counter or any of that, I'm just immediately going to Flicker their creature. Because if we don't draw neck. A uh, card next turn, we'll just have to discard it anyway. So if we can get just a tiny amount of value out of it, that's fine. That being said, stopping one damage I don't think is enough value. We're gonna stop a little bit more than that. They mill three off of that, okay. I could mill them three more cards, but that's actually bad for us. That's, that's giving them value, because yeah, they are green, black, escape, they got Woe Strider and Underworld Charger. All right, land three, let's go. That's not the end of the world. That can block any of their creatures and kill it. And also escapes, or uh, exiles one of their escape cards from the grave, exile the Woe Strider. So unless they exile this, we get to stop the Woe Strider from escaping, which is nice. That is really solid. If we were going to draw a non-land card, that's probably just about the best one we could have hit. Movies' favorite. Throw it on the Arachnir. Interesting. I don't know why they didn't just throw it on the Lenin. Maybe they have some kind of trick here. Okay, so I get to stop one of their things from escaping. I actually kind of want to stop the Arachnir more than I want to stop the Woe Strider. 
That'll be a 5-4. Arachnir will be a 4-5, but it's a 4-5 that also kills one of our blockers. We have a flying creature in hand. They both cost 5 to play, so... Woestrider gives them one more power and another sacrifice outlet, but they have a better sacrifice outlet than Woestrider out right now. Being able to drain me life is going to be more important this game because they're on the aggressive. Still no lands is brutal here. That's pretty much just the concession at this point. Um, yeah, we'll discard Hoplite this time. We will stop four damage this time, I guess. Well, I guess it's not quite over. I'm going to play Omen of the Sun because I get to gain some life off of that. Kill the Chimera, block something else. I guess that does get them to enough cards in the Graveyard to escape the Woe Strider. But then I can just Apathy the Woe Strider. And they'll have to exile everything else in their grave to do it. Which will include three escape cards. I am down to 9 against the Lamp out of Death's Vigil, though, which is not where you want to be. This card can easily drain you out at the end of the game. Soul Reaper of Mogis. They don't even have the fifth land for the Woe Strider yet. So I can cast one thing this turn. If I cast Heliod's Pilgrim, I could cast two things, because I could cast Pilgrim and the Sentinel's Eyes for plus one, plus one, but that doesn't actually get me anywhere. I think I need something like big enough to trade with their best creatures. So I just play a Daybreak Chimera and trade with Aerophant. Or do I just Apathy the Aerophants? Apathy is pretty bad against them because they can just sacrifice stuff. 2 4 stops everything except the Aerophant. Play a Chimera here. Basically, either one of these cards I use, I'm just trading one for one for the Aerophant. Using Chimera does leave me open to getting removal spelled here, but using Apathy, I just then don't have any other removal for their other cards. Sure, Heliod's Pilgrims gets me more Apathy to get more removal, this is not a game where I have time to play Heliod's Pogrom and then play the removal spell the next turn. So if I cast Apathy, I don't have any straight up removal left. Because I will never have time, basically, to Pilgrim into an Apathy to use that as removal instead. So. That is why I did that. I'm saving Apathy so I can just kill their 5-4, because none of my creatures will be able to block that alone and kill it. But, as I said before, this game has been over since the second turn I didn't draw land, pretty much. I will play it out, though, because you never know. Oh my god. Never mind. <laughs> Drag to the Underworld, and that is six damage on the board, so that was lethal there. Never mind, we know 100%. We're super dead. Opponent's deck was absolutely bonkers there. Multiple fantastic escape cards like Chainweb Arachnir and the Rare Woe Strider. Multiple fantastic removal spells like Myers Grasp and the Grasp of the Underworld. Great sacrifice out outlets like the Woe Strider, Lampet of Death's Vigil, Soul Reaper of Mogis. That was just really what you want for green-black escape. So a very well-crafted deck from our opponent. Uh, just taking advantage of our mana screw there. Meyer Triton. We're playing against a blue-black self-mill here. 
drop all the of the Lost Pride. Just trade that with Triton. Because Triton's little 2 1 death touchness is going to be annoying through the rest of this game. Unless they attack us. If they attack us, I'm not going to block. But I'm still going to attack into Triton here. I guess we have Omen of the Sun to get some 1 1s and just start attacking in with those instead. That's not as bad of a trade for us, but. Triton's going to trade with something. Just guaranteed. It's going to do it soonish. Yeah, just, just go in there. We get to exile an escape card now, which is some value. Ooh. And now I'm actually going to play a Pilgrim over and over the sun. They'll know that we have Apathies, but they won't know that we have two. This is definitely a long game kind of hand. Double Apathy, Archon of the Falling Stars. Could Sentinel's Eyes my Pilgrim, but I think I just hold on to that. It's got multiple heroes that give plus one to the whole field when I do that. So I'm just going to hold on to Omen plus Blessing at instant speed. If for some reason I want to cast both of these, I can. Omen of the Sea from our opponent to scry to draw a card. Very, very solid omen. End step. Cast our Omen of the Sun now. Counter an Omen of the Sun. I'll take it. I'm fine with that. I guess it keeps us off of scrying with it, which is actually not that great because we do want to hit our six lands, but we got a counter spell out of the way for Archon of Falling Stars. But in blue-black, they're likely to also just have removal left over. At this point, if Heliod's Pilgrim dies, I'll have two cards in my grave. So I guess at this point, I'll Sentinel's Eyes. Because I only have one thing to hold up at instant speed and only cost one mana. So I could still cast all of my instants with a Sentinel's Eyes on Heliod's Pilgrim. And if they try to use removal on it, we can draw out the removal on a Karametra's Blessing instead of on the Pilgrim itself. Although I'm not so sure that is something we really want to do. Don't know if that's necessary at all. Myers Grasp. Well, alright, I'm gonna do it, whatever. <laughs> Cause, uh, that was the kind of removal spell that's like only gonna kill stuff as small as Pilgrim. Don't know if I'll save Pilgrim with my Allseed of Life's Bounty. That is a bigger question, because Allseed could also save big stuff like Archon for sure. Because yeah, Karametra's Blessing doesn't save big creatures from stuff that just says like exile target creature. Allseed of Life's Bounty does. I'm just going to apathy this thing, get it out of the way, unless I hit my 6th mana, because we know that they don't have a uh, counterspell. There's no counterspells in the set for only 2. I will trade with Pilgrim to get the Sentinel's Eyes in the grave, so I can throw Sentinel's Eyes on Archon and have a big old Flying Vigilance. Could have waited till I hit my 7th land, but we just never know when that's going to happen. One with the stars. That's actually fine. We have two flickers in this deck. We also have all Seed of Life's Bounty to just give Archon protection from blue here to save it from that. I don't know if it'll have Summoning Sickness. I think it'll have Summoning Sickness, but I guess I'll find out right now. Protection from blue. See, all Seed's really good against enchantment base removal because we can just do it later. Oh, it doesn't have Summoning Sickness. Awesome. Throw Sentinel's Eyes on it too, then. Might as well. We've got a lot of cards in our grave, so we can just keep escaping this. Double Dreadful Apathies if they just try to play Flying Blockers. They need more removal now. And at the very worst, we hit them for five. 
I probably shouldn't have exiled the Omen of the Sun whenever that happened. Oh, they countered that and exiled it. Okay, so my exiles were fine. I countered or exiled an instant and a creature, which is good because Archon can bring back an enchantment from the grave, so we don't want to exile our enchantments. We want to leave all seed in there. Lamp out of Death's Vigil. Well, we don't have to get rid of that because it's just a ground creature. Just keep slapping for five a turn. I'm going to start holding on to the lands now because we do have a lot of mana. And they could have the uh, target player discards two cards enchantment to get rid of our apathies. I probably even should have held on to the seventh land because the highest mana cost in our deck is six. So we should have stopped there. Sacrificing the Omen of the Sea to Scry. Looks like they're digging for removal here. We're doing fine on so far. We're definitely going to apathy that Vexing Goal. They sacrifice it to Lampad to gain a life. But, uh... We still get in for five here. They are dead in two turns. They're not actually immediately dead because they have two creatures to sacrifice to the lamp head so they can go up to six life if they want to. Our deck is the kind of deck that's going to leave this dreadful apathy on the board until the last second because we have a lot of... Well, not a lot, but we have some white devotion stuff. Ooh. Well, now I'm going to exile this in response so that they can't sacrifice it and get a copy. Because Nightmare Shepherd makes it so they get a copy of any of their non-token creatures when they die. So if I exile it in response before the Nightmare Shepherd hits the board, they can't then just sacrifice the Apathy Gold to get a 1-1 copy of it. So now they still have one Flying Blocker. We shut that off. Hit them down to one life here. They sacrifice Nightmare Shepherd to the Lamp Ed. Actually, they probably sacrifice the lamp head to itself first and then the shepherd to the lamp head. Because they get a copy of it with uh, Nightmare Shepherd's ability, which is cool. Alright, Daybreak Chimera is a good draw. Just another flyer here. So they need more removal spells. Alright, they're just going to sacrifice the, uh, the Nightmare Shepherd first. Now we have two flyers. I think we're looking pretty good here. Omen of the Dead on the Nightmare Shepherd, so they have it to block again. But I have two flyers out, so they need another blocker. They can sacrifice... They can actually sacrifice Lampad to itself... Twice. They can sacrifice it to itself, get the token, sacrifice the token to itself and the Shepherd, so they can gain three life. Um, and survive that way, because they block um, one of our flyers with the Shepherd, block the 5-5 five, five flyer with the Shepherd, but that involves them sacrificing all of their field, so they were still probably going to lose, but they had one line that I think, if I did the math right, would save them. So we are at six wins, that is where you want to be in quick draft to get all of your gems back, but... See if I can't get a 7-win run again, especially with the monocolored deck to end off the format. That would be beautiful. The absolutely lovely final match. Final boss time. Win or loss? The last game. We have two losses and six wins at seven wins. You've made it. At three wins, you're out. This is how we're going to end it with a real aggressive hand. Wayfarer with Sentinel's Eyes and two two-mana creatures. Daybreak Chimera with a bunch of white creatures because we're a mono-white deck, meaning Chimera gets to get cast here. Opponent is going first, though. If we were on the play, this hand would be absolutely beautiful. On the draw, still pretty good. Turn one Wayfair. let's just get things started. I think we're going to play Hero of the Pride next turn, because then Sentinel's Eyes targeting Hero of the Pride is a big buff. We get a buff from Wayfair. we get a buff from Hero on the rest of our creatures. Just a big combo there. Another moment, probably should have waited until main phase 2, because now they know we don't have any tricks for the Wayfarer. And they may have just shot down the Wayfarer with Omen of the Forge instead. Probably not. But it may have been a thing that they would choose to do. Three mana available leads into Annex. 
hardened in the forge. Whenever one of their creatures dies, they get satyrs from it. Kind of want to apathy that. They're down to three cards in hand, so we could try to just outvalue them. Uh, we can't attack into that. We can't play a flyer to get around that yet, not till next turn anyway. I guess Leonin trades with it and exiles it, so they don't get anything from that. So we could play Leonin and a Sentinel's Eyes. Sentinel's Eyes on Wayfair makes it a 2-3. Buff itself make it a 3-4, still attack there. So if we want to get aggressive, we go Leonin, Sentinel's Eyes here. If we want to get defensive, we just apathy that and then play Chimera next turn. So kind of a turning point between if we want to get offensive here or if we want to try to just be like, all right, well, I've got bigger cards than you probably. I think just the way this hand is leading, I think we just get aggro. We just go for the Sentinel's Eyes here. And then the Leonin can block trade with an axe, and they don't even get a satyr out of it. Alright, so our opponent has four mana now, three red and a white. Omen of the Forge that they can sacrifice to scry two, if they're not doing anything else. Now do I Dreadful Apathy? I have four mana available. I can only cast one of my cards, because I have a two mana card and two three mana cards. If I had two two mana cards, obviously I would just double spell here, but the fact that I don't means I have got to choose what I'm wanting to do here. I think, I mean, they're at 16. I think I'm wanting to just get aggressive, but this could mean they have a white omen if they just pass turn. Like, they definitely have an instant. If they have a white omen, I think we Dreadful Apathy plus one plus one onto Leonin of the Lost Pride, so they have to double block with both of the tokens to kill that. So it's still a one for one trade. We trade Leonin for their omen. Yeah, because if they have Omen in hand, we don't want to play Chimera and just attack with Leonin, because Leonin would be a good trade into an Anax, but it would be a terrible trade into Omen if we don't play an enchantment this turn. Ooh, just sacrificing the Omen of the Forge. That I absolutely love. We know that they don't have the White Omen then to create two one ones. So we know we're just slamming in here. It doesn't matter where I put it, because it's just as much damage on either creature, and they're down to 10. They're not playing black, so we're just going to dump out all our lands at all times. They're not going to make us discard. They're at 5 mana now, 3 cards in hand. Only one white, though. They could have a hand where they have cards like Daybreak Chimera, and they're just sad right now. Heliod's Pilgrim is very good. In red-white, they could have the four-mana red removal spell, give plus one, plus one to something, and deal four. And obviously in white, they could have Dreadful Apathy, which we are very familiar with in our own deck. Heliod's Pilgrim, if I play an enchantment here, I do still get to attack with Lena, so I think we actually just play an enchantment creature over the flyer. They also just don't have that many creatures on board, and they're likely to just play a Dreadful Apathy this next turn. So it doesn't really matter if we're flying or on the ground. The biggest thing that matters between Corsair and Daybreak Chimera is that Chimera has one more power. Ooh, wow. No blocks. They don't want to chump with Pilgrim, because they can probably do a good block with it later. But that does mean they're down to four. Glory Bearers is the play. Ooh, Heliod's Pilgrim to pick up a Dreadful Apathy or a plus one plus two aura. I forget what it's called. I don't actually think that's that good right now. We don't have an attack, really. We could play Corsair, give something plus one plus one. I guess we give Leiden plus one plus one, just trades with Glory Bearers. Yeah, Corsair gives us an attack. 
do really want to hit one more land, because then we could play Pilgrim and Chimera, or Pilgrim and the two-mana enchantment. They have to block this or they die, so they probably just trade with Glory Bearers. Actually, maybe I should have attacked all three. Because if I attack all three, I do two damage to them, for sure. The Seder Tokens can't block, so they're pretty much irrelevant at this point. Since I'm at 20 and they're at 4, I have plenty of way bigger than 1-1s one -ones if I need to block them. The only way these would be relevant is if they could be chump blockers in this game. They have one blocker, we have four attackers. They've got a removal spell, but it costs three. They'll only have two mana up afterwards. Even if they have the two mana red omen again, the omen of the forge, they could only kill two things, because three on dreadful apathy, two on the omen, no mana left. They kill this with the two damage spell, this with the dreadful apathy, and they take four. Actually, no, they don't take four, because they block there, and they take two. But... It'll be fine. Alright, we hit the land for the Heliod's Pilgrim, so I think uh, they have two blockers, so we just Pilgrim for the plus one plus two spell, and this should probably just be lethal because we get the enchantment buff from Wayfair as well. We just buff whatever doesn't get blocked for two more damage there. Yeah, that's definitely lethal. And I guess it was already lethal because they block these two and take four, but now it's lethal even if they have an Omen of the Forge so it is a little safer to play the Pilgrim first. I guess if they had Omen of the Forge, they'd just respond to the Pilgrim with the Omen. But uh, anyways, yeah, that will get us there. Seven wins with the Mono White deck. Mono Colored has been just where you want to be, or where I want to be, <laughs> in these last few Theros Beyond Death drafts. So that will end today's Magic Arena video. I hope you all enjoyed it. I definitely did it. Tomorrow, Theros Beyond Death quick drafts are rotating off of Arena and being replaced by War of the Spark premiere drafts. So, if I timed it right, and War of the Spark premiere drafts are indeed on tomorrow when I'm recording, that will be tomorrow's video. If not, and I'm actually off by a day by accident, I don't think I am, but I'm pretty sure tomorrow's video is going to be War of the Spark premiere draft. If not, we will just hop back into another premiere draft of Call Time. We will still be doing these just as as time goes on until Strixhaven hits, alternating those out with the, uh, the new sets. So again, at the end of the videos, I would like to thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you all again next time. Let me see the last one. Allure? I don't even know what this does. All right, I'll see you all later for some more Magic Arena.